This is not about mixing. It's not about production or marketing. This is about forging through and finishing the album. I have done about 12 albums and it's not getting easier. In fact, each one feels like there are new challenges and the answers from the last album process do not necessarily work with this one. In researching this, I asked several friends about their creative process and what stops them from getting the album done or script or painting. And it's occurred to me that all of us need to overcome completely different obstacles in order to finish the body of work. For some it's distractions, others it's boredom, others is lack of confidence or apathy or frustration or self-loathing or procrastination or hatred for yourself and everything you do. It's interesting how art forces us to face our different demons. So I hope this helps you conquer yours. Set aside the next two months, focus on completing this. Finish the mix. No new remixes, no new projects, no new TV shows to start binge watching. Focus. Watch my blipvert on creative time management as the spreadsheet I mentioned is critical to this. There's a link in the description. Disclaimer. This is the angel spit way, which means it might not necessarily work for you. These ideas could also apply to finishing your novel, painting, sculpture, photo gallery, or any other artistic endeavor. This is not the time to be creative. It's the time to buckle down, focus, and work hard. Rant. You are selling your taste, not your skills. Find a niche and exploit it. Do not dumb it down. Which is why I think it's important for artists to write, produce and mix their own work. Your sound is the most important selling point that you possess. End rant. Personally, I find that the final output stage induces psychosis. So healthy diet and lifestyle will help you get through this. And I'm serious about the psychosis. The self-doubt and self-hatred can absorb you and convince you to give up. I find the final output stage incredibly hard and so does my wife. I have always found it so difficult. Every album is brutal to work on and it doesn't get easier. The only comfort I've learned is that it's normal to lose yourself in the lower levels of hell. You feel like you are in hell because you are in hell. Just keep going. I'm not sure if that's the best advice or worst advice ever. So let's forge ahead and get out of hell. If possible, divide your work time into segments. Get up early, work on your art for an hour, go to work. Get home, work for another hour on your art. And as usual, avoid wasting time on the internet. I'm addressing this from a musical point of view, so I will be talking about mixing. Other art forms might be detailing a painting or editing a script. Just translate all this to suit your art form. Mixing is an ongoing process. I never get it right on the first attempt. It takes me at least three drafts. When I mix, I mix all the tracks at the same time. I work on one tracks mix, then I move to the next, then I move to the next. I'll get all tracks to the draft one mix, and then all tracks go to the draft two mix, and then all tracks go to the draft three mix. Then everything is completed around the same time in a perfect world. This helps get continuity across the album. Plus, it also ensures I keep each track unique from all of the other tracks. It also helps me walk away and clear my head from the other tracks and focus on something else which is mixing the latest track. So this is what the drafts look like. Draft number one, mix the track as well as possible on speakers. Once you're done, put it to the side. Now, mix the next track as well as you can on speakers. Once all of the tracks are mixed to draft one, come back and listen to the mixes on different devices like iPhones, iPads, car stereos, headphones. Make sure you can hear the kick drum, the bass line on your iPhone. Make sure no sibilance sticks out. Make sure you can hear the vocals. Make sure they sit well in the mix and check the side chaining with the kick drum. Make sure it's clear and not muddy. Make notes about the mix. The more notes, the better. This draft, draft number one, is about catching mistakes and finding places to improve. Around the end of draft one, I am familiar with the tracks and my mindset is often not good. As all I can hear are mistakes. Usually I hate the album at this stage. I hate all the songs. I hate the lyrics. I hate my voice. I just want to give up. But the more mistakes you find, the more potential you have for improvement. Draft number two. Remember those notes you made from draft one? Well, this is where you implement them in this round of mixing and editing. Go through the notes, make the changes. Once you have worked on all the mixes, check them. Make notes again, rinse and repeat. It's a good idea to keep track of the notes for each song as you don't want 
one draft saying the vocals are too loud and then the next draft saying the vocals are too soft because you're wasting your time then. At the end of draft two, my incredibly bad attitude towards the album probably hasn't improved much. However, a few tracks now stick out and are potentially cool. I start having overwhelming feelings of failure and the daunting sense of, I will never finish this, it completely sucks. All you can do is forge ahead at this stage. So let's keep going. Draft three, implement the notes you made after draft two. Check the mixes, rinse and repeat. At the end of draft three, I usually start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The mixes are starting to reveal the nature of the songs and I can start to hear the actual songs. So the notes here are more about shaping the character, not just sonic equalization. Listen again to the mixes, make notes. These notes should be the last notes you make. Cause if it ain't taking shape now, you might be overanalyzing. At this stage, I'm usually exhausted. I've usually lost complete perspective and I can't hear how good the tracks are anymore. But now is not the time to worry about what's good or bad because those choices were made months ago. And that's why the Excel spreadsheet is very important. This is the time for formula and mathematics. Can I hear the bass? Can I hear the kick and the snare? Are the instruments fighting with the voice? Can I hear the character of this track? Can I hear the actual song and not just a well-produced demo track? Towards the end of the project, you get exhausted. You lose perspective. You need to fly using the dials because you can no longer see the horizon for the storm clouds. Like that? Draft four is as high as I go. I am not allowed to go past this. If it gets to draft four and it still isn't right, then it gets released and I gotta live with it. Oscar Wilde or someone said that a poem is never finished, it's abandoned. And this is where it gets abandoned. If you don't do this, you'll keep mixing the track until it's flat, boring and lifeless. There's a balance between overproducing and raw energy. And you'll need to figure out where that is for you and how to toe the line. If you are not happy with the mix, ask yourself, once this track is mastered, will this still be an issue? Will the audience hear this issue? Can I live with this issue? Will you honestly notice this issue in 12 months? Probably not, so it's done. This is another reason I highly recommend getting your work professionally mastered, as fresh ears on this mix bring new perspective. Sending the final mixes to a mastering engineer will take two to four weeks. That's the time to rest your head and walk away from the tracks. When they come back for their final okay, you will be refreshed and ready to go through your fresh barrage of sonic hell. I consider myself a pretty good sound engineer, but I am no mastering engineer. It is a skill unto itself. So let the pros do it. Rant. Criticism is pointless. I highly encourage you to become proficient in programming. A large part of your sound comes from the way your music is programmed and put together. The sound you choose, the beats, the samples, the way you process your vocals. These choices are the brush strokes that define your unique sound. This is your personal taste and your taste is one of your biggest selling points. I have heard many bands whose programming is not amazing but it's interesting and it's unique and that's what sets them apart. That's their selling point. People email me all the time and they ask me, what do you think of my track? Well, I gotta be honest. I don't like giving people critique on their tracks. My taste might not be beneficial to the development of their track. My comments might stop them from achieving their sound. I don't know their audience. I don't know their goals and no one can help you find it just you. The road to finding your unique sound is lonely and full of rejection. So many influences are telling you, I'll be more EBM, or you know that band that's blowing up? You need to be just like them. Or my favorite, I like your old stuff better than your new stuff. Meanwhile, you are telling yourself that you hate your voice, you hate your music, it sucks, it can be all overwhelming. It's like trying to describe something that does not exist. And the only way you can communicate the idea is by showing someone the finished product. And then you're terrified they're gonna hate it anyway. The moral of the story is this, screw them. Do you, be you, forge your own path. The world does not need another follower. It needs you to bring your rock your way. Rock.